Okay, your project is to buy the batteries of the lithium iron phosphate nanofibers in it. As you can see right here, this is the introduction to the project. As technology advances, the concerns about the impact of fossil fuels on the environment and industry, um, scientists try to find cheaper and non-toxic ways to deal with this problem. And the answer is batteries. These electric spawn batteries will be useful in powering electric cars, which are environmentally <coughs> friendly. The structure of the lithium iron phosphate car carbon nanofiber is shown in the following slide. Right here, you guys can see the crystal structure of the lithium iron phosphate. As we can see, we have lithium, which is the right here, the iron, the, phos the phosphorus, and the oxygen. Lithium iron phosphate crystallizes as the olivine type, where lithium and iron are the cations, while, while oxygen is the anion. Lithium and iron are each surrounded by six ox oxygen atoms which means that, there are, that the properties of the material are influenced by strong crystal field effects. Lithium iron phosphate is a semiconductor with a band gap of 0.3 volts, which is influenced by the structure of this fiber. Right here, we can see the nanofiber structure of the lithium iron phosphate doped with carbon. Lithium iron phosphate nanofibers are formed <coughs> after this material is electrospun and then coated with carbon to form a composite material. Carbon sources such as glucose into the raw live lithium iron phosphate and then carbonize to high temperatures to form the, the nanofibers as we can see right here. Right here we're looking into the actual fibers of this lithium iron phosphate. You can see right here, the size of these particles range from 400 to 600 nanometers. While the size of these fibers right here, of these particles right here, range from 100 to 300 nanometers. Which means the carbon coated uh, lithium iron phosphate is reduced in size from the bare uh, lithium iron phosphate particles. Well, just get them in touch with me. Now we're going to have Hong talk about the properties of the lithium iron phosphate nanofibers. Oh, we were practicing for presentation in the class. So, a lot of our biomedical, this is the class, we're going to talk about the board. We use it for classes. So, I'm going to talk about the but property of the lithium iron phosphate nanofiber. Okay, there's, we have a, a lot of type battery right now in the industry. But the lithium CO2 is a kind of expensive material and toxic. A lithium MN two O four is a good capacity, but like it's like it's a thermal and stable. Then now we can try the lithium phosphor uh, phosphate to make a better battery. Okay, now now look at the property of lithium iron phosphate. It has a lot of advantage about using lithium iron phosphate. Lithium iron phosphate is much cheaper and less toxic than the other other. All the, all the other stuff, and then it has a higher kind of voltage, about 3.5 volt, and then they have the large uh, theoretical capacity in the storage charge per unit mass of this, and then they also have a stable structure over the, the cycle performance, but they have some disadvantage over there too, it's a low charging and a low current recharge, so how can we make it better? How can we make the battery go better and then overcome the disadvantage? I think we try to coat it, the, the nanofiber with the carbon. And you can see on the charge right here, about the conductivity of the lithium iron phosphate dotted with carbon. You can see two peaks right here. It say it show like the the, the it's no absence of the impurity of the carbon. So it's mean it conduct conduct more current through it. Then the gap between them is 0 0.32 voltage. Yeah, this means like, because the, the, the impurity of the other will affect the, the resistivity of the structure. So it means less impurity, so you, ha you, you have more conductivity. 
And then we, we, we checked about the, the stable, we did the experiment to check the stable capacity of the nanofiber, lithium iron phosphate. As you can see on the slide, on the graph right here, on the dot, we the experiment for 30 cycle. It was very stable between 158 and 162. It's stable for the whole 30, 30 cycles. So it's very good and very stable. And then on the little picture right here, we can see this, the, the, the discharge and the charge voltage for the different, for a different cycle right here. See the, the gap between them very close. It's mean like, it's mean like they, they have a good kinetic for the battery. Then I make the, another, another comparison between the lithium iron phosphate and the lithium iron phosphate with carbon. You see the figure right here show this. The, the bottom, the bottom, the bottom graph right here show the, the lithium iron phosphate. It's not really stable. You see the, the capacity of this dropping down, like when you reach the 50 cycle. It's like dropping down all the way down and then, and then on the lithium, iron phosphate with the carbon, you can see this like, if it is stable from 120, it came up until 150, it stay all the same. Yeah, this is this a how, how the carbon, carbon coated affect the lithium iron phosphate nanofiber. And then we can check this, the cycle stability with the various discharge current rate. You can see like current rate 1.1c, 1.2c, 1.5c, 1c. Then we can see that it's very stable for each cycle, like, but like we can get the maximum, we can get the maximum capacity at the 0.1c rate. Like, like the, the, the structure of the lithium phosphate also contributes to its property. You can see this, this when you, when you dock it with the carbon, it reduces the size of the nanofiber. So it enhances the elect electrical contact between, between each of component. And they, they have the last specific surface area. Because like the more area you have, is the, the more power you can hold in there, the more, cap yeah, more energy you can hold. And then they got the uniform carbon distributed on the surface of the nanofiber. It can hold more charge in there. Then now Lily can talk about the processing of the lithium iron phosphate battery. I'm going to talk about the processing of electrospinning. Electrospinning is an inexpensive technique applied to polymer systems to acquire nanofibers. With different electrospinning setups, a variety of nanomaterials can be prepared. So here's a step-by-step -step process of electrospinning. First, you create a spinning solution composed of lithium, iron, phosphorus, and polyvinyl pearlidone, and that is loaded into a plastic syringe with a stainless steel needle at the top. Then a copper wire connected to a high DC voltage is put into the solution, and that's called the electrode rod. Then a grounded flat iron net is placed by the syringe to collect the uh, prepared nanofibers. A potential difference of 13,000 volts is placed between the collector and the electrode rod, rod to make sure that the nanofibers are stable and continuous. With a starting temperature of 300 degrees Celsius, the nanofibers are heated at a rate of one degree Celsius per minute for five hours. And then at 700 degrees Celsius, the fibers are calcinated at the same heating rate for 10 hours. During calcination, the fibers are basically purified and they are um, transformed into energy storing material. Here are some advantages of electrospinning on batteries. First, they make the battery have better electronic conductivity the operating voltage is higher, and it ranges from around 3 volts to 3.4 volts maximum. It's a cost-efficient process. Electrospinning is usually a pretty inexpensive process. The cycling stability of the battery is about 2,000 times. That means it can be recharged up to 2,000 times and still work. 
Also, it stays charged for longer, which means it has a better discharge capacity.